Hello there. We are going to look at uh, the match between Maxim Vasilakrav and Hikaru Nakamura. This is the quarterfinals of the Skilling Open. And we are looking at day one of, of uh, the quarterfinal. So, two, uh, two day matches, one match per day. And it's only a tie break if, if the matches uh, are split. So, let's dive into this match. And we are going to start with a game one. Maxim Vasier Lagrav with white and Hikaru Nakamura with black. So they play four game matches each day. This was the first game. E4 by uh, Vasier Lagrav. He tends to stick to his guns and he's an E4 player. Rui Lopez. And now we have the Berlin by uh, Nakamura. And what's more, we have uh, the main line. The old mainland, the one that people have been more or less avoiding over the years, the Berlin end game. I think I think people just got tired of the Berlin end game and they started playing anti-Berlins and then they thought, well, we might as well play the Italian if we're playing anti, uh, anti-Berlins. So the Italian is sort of the current fashion in, in these E4 lines. And Black is considered to be doing, I think, relatively well in these end games. But Maxim Vasilakrav is, is one of the few that still likes to play these positions and, uh, well, with some success, I might add. But let's see, the black position is very solid. I mean, Hikaru has been playing this a lot. He even plays this in, in Blitz games or on chess.com. We have h5. He wants to try to uh, secure the knight as much as he can. If g4, then the pawn would become weak and we open the h-file. Also, some options of the rook later coming into the game. So, a multifaceted move, h5. Bishop comes to f4, the pieces now come out. Rook a to d1, and bishop e6. Of course, we remember that the king already took on d8, so the king has already moved. So we can't castle either side for black. Knight d5 now by uh, Lagrave, and the rook comes out to h6. White centralizes, and we have bishop b4. Now, first, when I was studying this line, uh, I thought that allowing this, which Vasilagraf uh, did, he played a3 and allowed the double pawn, I thought that was considered not so great. But, let's see. Uh, I mean, Black shouldn't have any problems here. He played h4 now. Again, he has a very nice knight on f5, and his position is quite solid. But Lagrave tries to open it up here with g4. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Knight e7. And h4. The knight now uh, goes over to d5. And here Lagrave decides to give up the pawn on c3. Now on one hand, those were double pawns and, and maybe not so bad to lose them. But does white have enough for the pawn that remains to be seen. The knight now goes to a4, I guess intending to bring it back to c5. If he had gone to d5, maybe he runs into some problems uh, at some stage with the c4 move, but he decides to go to a4. And now we see rook f3, bishop d5, the rook comes to f4, and the knight comes back to b6. We have rook uh, e to f1, rook g6, and well, now if you take on f7, actually what happens if, if we take on f7? I guess we take on g3, right? And there are some issues. So can we gonna check on g2. Yeah, we don't, obviously we don't take back here. We, we just keep the bishop and this is strong. So white can't take on f7, and he plays rook f5. Bishop c4 attacking the rook, rook back to e1, and now bishop e6. Now this move actually looks like it is a mistake. And why is it a mistake? Because, well, in the game, rook f2 was played by uh, Lagrave. However, he could have played knight takes e6. And turns out that black does not have a good choice. If he takes with the rook, I'm going to double again on the FL. And now you can't really protect this pawn. You'll have to give it up if you play F6, I take, take. And I have 
double pass pawns if you try to defend it well now you lose the exchange I hit you here and you can't really go here because of e6 you can't take because of it's even checkmate so big problem so black would have to give up the uh, exchange there also surprisingly you can't take with a pawn because now this rook will come to hang you rook f3 and yeah I, I did a, a video on sort of patterns where the rook is out of play and this fits right into that the bishop takes away this square if the rook try, tries to escape we play bishop f4 and we bring the king we can attack it and later let's say we do something here for black I'm, I'm not sure what really let's say here and I actually uh, I even blundered already we could have played bishop g5 but I just wanted to demonstrate even if, if the king was also on uh, another square let's say we just uh, move, move the stuff over even if uh, the stuff wasn't here hanging we can play bishop g5 and the rook is never getting out we didn't even have to play that move the rook is never getting out so the rook will be trapped however uh, like I said rook f2 was played so a missed opportunity there by Lograf will it come back to haunt him we'll see seemingly not after h5 and now all of a sudden uh, black has to give up material it seems like the best way is to take on g5 bishop takes play rook d5 play the position down the exchange but you do have a pawn for it you have a very sturdy uh, light squared bishop that should be able to keep, th keep things more or less under control but nakamura decided to give up the exchange this way but that turns out to be a mistake because of the e6 bishop takes h5 a fantastic move here by uh Lagraf. he played g4 absolutely brilliant move now where does the bishop go that's a good question it doesn't have a good square if you go to g6 I'll play rook f6 where do you go so you can't have to take the pawn but now you lose a lot of options you can never uh, interpose the bishop even though you couldn't hang on a minute, why, why couldn't you just play e7 right away I'm wondering now if e7 right away yes because we're covering e8 of course yeah he, he's taking the bishop away from the e8 square let's say we go here and now if we give a check we can go king d7 and we should be okay because we're covering e8 of course my horse so g4 absolutely fantastic move here wow g4 so bishop g6 we we uh take it back and, and he is long, no longer covering e8 and after takes after e7 <laughs> the rook can no longer go to the uh, to any square like this one because we will kill the check and then we will take and make a queen because there's no bishop brilliant stuff so Nakamura actually had to give up the second exchange here play knight d7 covering the f8 square but now we get the exchange and now Vashir Lagrave is up two exchanges and despite black having a lot of pawns that that's that's not enough here his king is stuck on the back rank and the, the black pieces don't really coordinate that well and in fact a nice move here by Lagraf liquidating with rook takes e5 the move pawn to a5 uh, means that we can win another pawn here rook takes c5 we can play a4 but that's just postponing the inevitable the pawn will be lost after rook a5 you can only choose if you lose this pawn or, or this pawn so Nakamura decided instead to improve his king c6 was also hanging which I didn't even mention and yeah this is just a winning position it seems for uh, Lagraf after h4 he played king e3 and now the uh, the bishop is running out of squares rook g1 and we're gonna win this pawn here and this was actually where Nakamura resigned he doesn't really have any any way to play on here Let, let's say he tries to uh, go for this pawn 
sorry, the pawn on a3, you will simply pick up the pawn on h4. And black is not in time to cover this. We're going to get another pawn. And this position is winning. We are going to uh, drive the king away and at the right moment uh, take this pawn without allowing the uh, opposition. And we will have a winning pawn and game. So very nice technique indeed by Maxim Vasil Lacroix in this game and some some excellent tactics there in the end game. Some some nice end game tactics showing high class there. Very resourceful and it turned out that uh, in the two games where Nakamura had white, he did indeed put massive pressure on Lagraf, but Lagraf defended very well. Especially two tough end games where perhaps Nakamura had some chances. Wasn't able to capitalize. Uh, Lagraf defended very well and he takes day one. So Nakamura needs to come back tomorrow. We know he can't, but, but will he? Remains to be seen. And we'll see that tomorrow. See you then. Bye bye.